My name is Rachel. I am an aspiring artist. My mind is not at peace the majority of the time. As much as I'd like to lie to myself or others and say that it is. I have dealt with a lot of anxiety and depression since as long as I can remember. And I still battle with it now, but now my awareness of it is so heightened that it's a constant, everyday focal point for me. Mental health has been important to me since my late teens because of my realization that I was struggling to complete even everyday tasks and move on and have, you know, my peers around me seem to be advancing, you know, more quickly than I was or had these great big aspirations and I felt stagnant in some way. So at then, at that point, I had to become very introspective and realize that maybe there was something holding me back and I realized it was my mental health I think my fascination has always been in the human experience, whether it was mine or someone else. I won't ever be perfectly at peace. I think I will feel moments of peace and I will, I've learned now to embrace those moments and savor them. Uh, I think because constantly in life, it's an imperfect life. We are imperfect. It was kind of, for me, an escape into another reality because what was my reality was pretty traumatic up until that point and continued to be so. I, I realized in my later years just because of all of the mental health issues that I had to deal with stemming from that early childhood trauma. So for me, that was my favorite. Those were my favorite memories are the first time that I discovered, you know, like Jane Austen or Charlotte Bronte or a lot of the classics. I love short stories. I'm always interested in short stories, like kind of just a small capture of the human experience. Uh, but I'll read anything, if, you know, if it's about, if it's a book published about self-compassion or new findings about the brain, you know or addiction. I wanted to be creative. I wanted to be different and unique. So I think, and that's just part of my personality. I wanted to be refined. I wanted to be better than who I was or what I felt I came from. I feel like my humanity is in my art and people can feel it, see it, that I'm not afraid to be honest I've tried charcoal and I've tried airbrush, I've tried silk screening, I've tried oil painting, I've tried pastels, color pencils, graphite, all of it. And for me, all of those water-based mediums kind of stuck. So when I that was the mo what I was most excited to paint when I was younger. 
My Manderley piece evolved from my love of the Daphne du Maurier novel called Rebecca. Uh, I love the mood, and I think that is maybe why that novel is so popular. I have a lot of symbolism in, for instance, my stained glass painting is supposed to be a depiction of, you know, the life that I've experienced up until this point. And so some of it has, you know, more peaceful and calm meaning, meanings, want more bodily clarity, and arrived at some, you know, realizations, while some depict the struggles and the mistakes and the regrets that I've had. As I got older and realized that it's not just about the technical, you know, making something look like the picture that you're copying from or the still life that's in front of you, it, then that's when my art pieces became more conceptually based and I needed some sort of symbolism behind them. It's okay to laugh at ourselves, but that it's important to actually see what we really are, what we can become. I'm someone that is always looking to know who I am. I consider my 21-year-old self scared, very fearful, not wise. There was no room for wisdom. There was too much fear, too much anxiety. Now, there's a lot of regret, shame, but acknowledgement and a lot of clarity and that I can be more wise. 10 years ago, I was young. Everything was easy to put off and say, five years, yeah, I'll be there or I'll do this, of course. That's an expectation that's, and then those, that five years came. <laughs> and it was, oh, I need two more years. It came to a time where I realized there's no more years left. You, know, you don't get to push it off anymore. What are your priorities? What do you love? What's important to you? What's not? What are you doing that's not good for you? How do you change it? I guess the one thing I fear most is my codependency. I think because I struggle with codependency, a lot of my relationships have been where I focused a lot of my time. Whether it's a friendship, you know, or, or otherwise, it's definitely where I've spent a lot of my time. I don't think that that's all of who I am or what I do. I think that when I spend that time, parts of me are bound to leak out and they do. Yeah, I mean, my favorite poem is uh, Desiderata. It's a Latin poem by uh, Max Erming, a lawyer from the 1930s. And it talks about how your fears are mostly born of fatigue and loneliness. And I think that's very true. I think that that's where a lot of my own fears came from. And I don't think it's something that will haunt you, that you have to carry. I, I think once you recognize it, you can change it. I'm not as afraid as I was. I'm excited to get started. I'm more available now to start my life than I ever was before. 
I, I, my priorities are more obvious now than they ever were before to me. No, I'm not all of those things that I want to be. I have work to do. I think the, the best advice that has fit best for me has been just to stay as mindful and, and present in the moment as I can, to, to have compassion for myself. So I think it's just kind of acceptance and compassion and empathy that are the answers. Setting a more structured routine, building a checklist, checking off goals. Um, usually that includes long walks, uh, going to the gym, and pretty much just holding myself accountable. I think that you want to be as truthful to yourself as you can be, you'll be the most healthy mentally. I hope that my art continues to be a therapy for me, an outlet for me when I'm alone and I'm in my solitude. You know, as I've mentioned before, mindfulness is imperative for my own mental well-being because Without it, I, I tend to focus on some, something outside of me, problems outside of me. Everyone is going through it, you know? I'm not the only one, you're not the only one, but you're making choices. And those choices that you make will have an impact on how you're feeling, how your mental health is healing or not healing. And so to be very aware of those choices, Art is just like necessary, you know, it's just, I will never stop creating, I'll never stop painting, or it doesn't matter if it looks good or not, or it will always be in a drive in me, it's always carried in me, in years I stopped thinking of myself as an artist, or people around me in my life didn't encourage it, or it was always there. I want it to be said that I was a loving mother. I was a loving sister. I was an artist. I was a... You know, knowledge seeker. That I'm not afraid to take risks. that she should love herself more. Maybe I need to change my perspective.